Guess who's back on her Instagram active era? <laughs> <laughs> Never thought I'd find the day, see the day where I actually said, oh my God, I'm active on Instagram again. I have been so inconsistently there for the entirety of the time I've been on booktube. And as of recent, I have refound my love for Instagram and I have been loving posting photo dumps and doing all the things, updating on my stories and just keeping you guys on the know over there. And so I thought it would be really fun because I have not read anything in the entirety of June. I just got back from London. I just got over the flu period because I got home very sick and I am so very much in the mood to read. I just don't know what to read because I have so many options right now. My mood reading self is going in a million different directions, but they're all swinging very fantasy. However, out of the options I have, I don't really know what to pick. So the pick is up to you guys. I am going to be asking you guys on Instagram to control my next few reads because I just want somebody else to choose for me and we'll see what comes up. At the moment, I've got these three options right here that I am very much looking forward to that I really, really want to read. Painted Devils, which is the sequel to Little Thieves. I read Little Thieves last year, I think it was, and I very much want to read the sequel. We have got one of the Sanderson Kickstarter books. I think this calls my attention at the moment, just a little bit more than Tress of the Emerald Sea, and that is the most longest title I have ever seen. The Frugal Wizard's Handbook for Surviving Medieval England. This is a stunning book. I have loved loved every second of like flipping through it. All of the special little moments this book has are just a joy to see. Honestly, money well spent if I do say so myself. So another one of the options, think it looks super cozy and super interesting. So maybe something I could end up reading. And then Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross, which is one of my most anticipated releases for the year. This is the Fairy Loot Edition. It is also really, really stunning. So I don't know what to read amongst all three of these options. I'm gonna ask you guys on Instagram right now. Beautiful picture has been taken. And now let us ask, what should be my next read? And now we put this up and we wait to see what you guys say. Divine Rivals won. So this is what we're going to be reading. And I am so freaking excited. Here's the poll to prove it. I'm not lying. So let us start Divine Rivals and see what this is all about. Oh my God. I'm so excited right now. Let's go. And we've got some feta fries to accompany the experience. What's even better? <laughs> Welcome to the Chronicles of a Girl Who Still Feels Ill But Is Ready! Honestly, it's been the best form of escapism for me right now as I, again, still feel ill. I feel like I'm the saying we've got in Spanish. Si no es chana, es Juana. If it's not one, then it's the other. What else is there to do but push through? And by push through, I mean we are reading Divine Rivals and seeking our form of escapism in the form of academic rivals to lovers. Honestly, Rebecca Ross understood the assignment as I knew she would. I have read A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. I've yet to read the sequel, which I think is the final installment. I think it's a duology, I'm pretty sure, but I absolutely loved River Enchanted. It kind of revitalized my love for fantasy because it was so different to what I'd been reading at the time. And with this one, oh, I am in love with the way that they're communicating because I didn't know based on the synopsis exactly how they were corresponding with each other without knowing who the other was. And it turns out that these characters are connected by typewriters. How freaking cool is that? It's everything. So basically in this one, we follow Roman and Iris in a world where the gods are waging war against each other. And Iris's brother, Forrest, was enlisted to fight in the war. And she had been presumably sending him letters to, you know, update him with her life, how she was doing, her job at the Gazette, and really just asking how he was doing and what his journey has been like enlisting at war. Except that said letters have not made their way to him, but instead they made their way to her academic rival and the person who is vying for the exact same position at the Gazette as she is, Roman Kit. And so they've been writing each other letters without knowing who the other is, and they've been essentially just falling for the other through these letters. I cannot wait for the moment they find out that they are talking to each other, while Iris comes from a very, I guess, underprivileged family in the world that this is set in. She doesn't have a lot of resources to her. She has struggled financially for a long time, and throughout the course of the book, we really see 
see her go through, I think, every emotion imaginable, including that of grief. In contrast to Roman, who comes from a very wealthy and privileged family, somebody who has had every resource possible available to him, and somebody who has never had to think twice about the living conditions he has been in, and, and possibly, too, with the way that things are displayed in the book, has probably not have to fight for a lot in the course of his life because his father will make sure that he gets the things that he wants or the things that his father wants him to have. I love the fact that they come from very different backgrounds, that they've got very distinct personalities, but they are intellectually equal. I just, I love that so, so much in books and particularly in the setting of a fantasy romance. I think it just works so well. So that part I am loving. I will say just a huge content warning for Grieve because I did not expect it to take such a huge part of the first like third of the book. It took me by surprise. I sobbed my eyes out. It really did break my heart. And again, I was not aware. I was not expecting it. And when it happened, I was just a sob ridden mess. But honestly, Rebecca Ross will always evoke all of the emotions. So I'm not surprised that that was the case. So there's that so far. I love that at the point where I'm at in the story or the point I'm entering in the story, we are getting to see so much more of the world and the actual war. Because those are things that we don't really get to see in the very first part of the story because we're kind of very limited as far as knowledge goes to what the main characters know. It is dual POV, but we do only know what they know. And a lot of the time they are not made aware of a lot of the happenings of the war because the gazettes or the newspapers or at least the biggest ones, one of them is very much filtering and gatekeeping a lot of the information, whether out of fear or out of want to control what the people get to know or not get to know. It provides a very limited view. And now in the second part, we are getting to see the war a lot closer. We're getting to see who the key participants are, the people who are involved, what creatures are involved, and overall just more of that magical world building that makes the world what it is. And so I love that we get to see, it seems like a little bit of everything at this point in time. So I can't wait to see what continues to happen as I go further along into the story. my goddamn mind. Okay, friends, I have got an update for you. Chai latte is almost gone, which is kind of sad. But also, actual genuine question, why are grande drinks always better at Starbucks than when you order a larger size? I don't know. Pray for my wallet, too. I have finished Divine Rivals, and I think I'm giving this four stars. It was really good. I think for a second there, it kind of lost me, though. Like, I lost interest. The pacing was kind of, like, slower. And not that that's a bad thing, but I was just, like, expecting it to, like, you know, like, keep going, keep going. And then for a second there, I was kind of, like, you know, my brain was kind of wondering. And so I think I'm settling for a four star, which is still a great rating. And I... I think ultimately what this book does so, so well, aside from the whole rivals to lovers dynamic, is the fact that because it is set at a time of war, the book has this huge emphasis on the immediacy of things. Everything is so dire and everything's happening so quickly. There is no time to overthink your decisions. There is no time to go, mm, maybe not, maybe yes. You kind of have to live in the moment and there's this sense of urgency with everything happening, including the dynamic and the romance between the two main characters. And I really, really enjoyed that about the book because it being YA, I was a little bit scared that at times it would be very passive or that it perhaps wouldn't place the sense of importance that a war like this should have, but it does. And Rebecca Ross did not disappoint. And so she never shied away from actually showing you the horrors of war, actually describing them, actually navigating what living during that time technically would be like for
for the characters and for everybody surrounding like the main cast. The epilogue was also so freaking epic that I am just looking forward to book two and I love that this is a duology as well. It seems like Rebecca Ross is very much into duologies and so am I because that means that I can finish them fairly quickly. I don't have to worry about reading an entire series. I also love that Roman and Iris's dynamic got even better as the book got along. Even though there is a lot of hesitance sometimes to say things, it only adds to the angst and the tension of it all, which is so great. And it's so great because they are so oblivious yet so hyper aware of where they stand with each other. But everybody around them is just like, y'all just get it together. Like it's so freaking obvious. And also the side characters were really fantastic. Marisol and Keenan and also Addie. I absolutely loved all three of them. Marisol and Keenan are married to each other and Keenan is a soldier in the war. And Marisol was just like a warm hug in this book. She was so willing to help always. She is such a selfless person, not only with Addie and with Iris and with Roman as well, while they stay with Marisol as correspondents. But beyond that, with the soldiers in the infirmaries, she is just always so willing to help no matter the danger. Like she knows what stakes are currently at play and she just wants to help people because she knows how difficult it is. And that part of it, I also absolutely loved as well as Addie. I think Addie, although we didn't get to see a lot of her, I do think, because apparently we're getting a new romance in book two, I do think it will be Addie related. I would not be surprised if Addie and Forrest get together. I kind of have that theory happening in my brain. But with Addie, I also loved that there was another intellectual equal, another person writing, another person to really support Iris through a really, really rough time. Love the little found family like support system that both of the characters have got around them. It is just so, so beautiful to see. So there's that. We finished it, friends. Cheers to it. And now I need to figure out what I want to read next. I kind of do want to read the Frugal Wizard's Guide to whatever, whatever, whatever the Sanderson book is called, because that is the, I believe, non-Cosmere book out of his Kickstarter campaign. And so I would love to read it because it's its own standalone thing and I wouldn't have to worry about it connecting to the Cosmere in any way. However, I don't know if that's the vibe. And let us find something and put up a poll on Instagram so that you guys can choose my next read. Cheers to that. Okay, so we are in the office. I am going to set you in probably the worst spot ever because this is going to give me the weirdest angle ever. But I think we're going to pivot genres because the last poll was very fantasy heavy. This time around, I'm thinking we can do a romance. I thought I wasn't feeling a romance, but honestly, I think I could vibe with either of these two. So let us do The Love Wager or Addicted to You because I've been looking forward to both of these for a while. Addicted to You is a book that I told myself I wasn't interested in and I really didn't want to read. I've already read Kiss the Sky and I loved it. And I've heard that this shows you like the beginning stages of Rose and Connor's relationship, although they are not the focus of it, but they are in the background, which I think would be really interesting to see. I think I'd still, you know, potentially enjoy reading about their story. We'll see what happens. And then The Love Wager, which is one of my most anticipated releases of the year. It's a Lynn Painter book. Don't know if this is fake dating, but I do know that part of the premise of this book is that the main character literally skedaddles away from the hotel room that she, I think, can do noodled with the love interest and then they meet each other again through a dating app and it's like a whole thing so i think this could be a vibe this could be a vibe so let's put up a poll on instagram just going to snap the quickest picture ever which one should i go for and now this goes up and we wait to see what the people say and by the people i mean you okay so it seems like we have got some answers as to what i'm going to be reading next based on the results which were at first tied i need the 2000 of you who answered on instagram to get it together friends with 52 percent like the love wager by lynn painter has won and we're starting it today i can't believe i'm reading two of my most anticipated releases on this vlog this is exciting <laughs> It also appears to be my YouTube channel's birthday today, July 4th. Happy birthday to me and to us.
so tired right now. It's literally 10 p.m. and I want to go to bed because I have to wake up early tomorrow and I have to go train at 8 a.m. in the morning. However, I have been reading The Love Wager. I'm already like a hundred something pages into it and I'm pretty sure I'm already like a third of the way through this book. Lynn Painter has done it again. Why is this so freaking addicting? Oh my God. As I am looking absolutely positively unhinged at the moment. My hair is doing so many crazy things. I am going to update you on The Love Wager because this book is so good. I am so freaking in love with this. It's going by so quickly. So basically in this one, we have Hallie and Jack who met at Jack's sister's wedding. I am pretty sure she is the protagonist of the first book in this series, but you know how romance books do the, it's a romance series, but each book stands on its own and it follows different characters. It's one of those situations. And I'm very happy that although she does have her own book, her storyline weaves into this one so seamlessly where you don't feel like you are left out, you are in the know, you know the story. It doesn't feel like you're meeting two characters and, and they remain kind of like a big question mark throughout the story. You do get to know Colin and you do get to know Olivia, who again is the sister. So they met at her wedding. She was a bartender. Obviously he was the best man and they have a one night stand. They meet each other again through a dating app and they start talking like very jokingly, but then they make a bet a wager, the love wager, where they basically try and incentivize each other to find their respective soulmates or match. And whoever finds it first will win something and they make their wagers. And that's kind of how the story goes, where it goes. They are so whipped with each other, but they literally will not admit it because they're in the, oh, we're just platonic. Like we're just friends, but like y'all slept with each other. Y'all already know what it's like, what the dynamic is. And the truth is they don't get along with anybody else in the way that they get along with each other. The banter is unmatched. The chemistry is off the charts. And Lynn Painter has this really particular ability that I think is hard for me at least to find in romance books where at times it's so hard to get to know the characters. It's hard to get to know the people in their lives and it just feels sort of incomplete. Lynn Painter is the antithesis of that. She makes sure you know the characters, you know the main characters, you know their friends, their family members, that you know the entire background and history you just know everybody so intimately and so closely, which I love. And she does so, so quickly. And she does so in a way that immediately hooks you. Like it, she literally has got the rom-com formula to a T, which I think in books, sometimes it's so hard to connect to. At least it is for me. I am having the time of my life. They are actually quite funny. And the fact that they are in each other's dates because they are also on dates is everything. It's like such a, it's such a messy, but like incredible dynamic that I am very thoroughly enjoying. And because they talk every day and they were talking every day on the dating app, they know each other better than any of the other dates they've had, which is hilarious to me. I'll keep you posted because I'll probably finish it tomorrow. Hello friends, it is the next day and I am very excited to sit down and read because it is almost 10 p.m. It's 9.48 to be exact. And I have been running around around doing things all day. I went to the gym this morning and then I had to get ready, do a live show, film. And then after that, one of my best friends, Amahea, the one I went to visit in London, she came back to Panama because her and her mom were moving. And so I went over to help her pack her stuff. And then we went out for dinner and now we're here. First order of business. We have got a cute little strawberry vanilla swirl ice cream here that I'm very excited to have. And then more importantly, the love wager, which I'm about to sit down and read because I have not read anything all day and I really, really want to read before I head to bed in like an hour because I have to be up right and early tomorrow to do my reset day. Thursdays are the days where I just like get everything handled. I go grocery shopping. I do all of my laundry. I make sure to just wipe and clean and just make sure that all of the litter boxes are great. Do whatever restocks I have to do. Just clean the house, vacuum the rugs. It's just regular adult things. So that's getting done tomorrow. Ignore me because I look a mess because I just came back from training, but oh my god, it has the fake dating trope and the one bed trope unexpectedly. I love this book. 
Okay, friends, so I finished the love wager. Literally just sat down on the couch and just binged the second half of the book. And this was so good. I ended up giving it five stars. It's just everything I love in a romance. It's like quick and it's snappy and it's comedic and it's sarcastic. And the main characters just have this amazing back and forth banter. Like they're very quick with each other. The chemistry was like off the fucking charts, which again is not surprising for Lynn Painter because even in Better Than the Movies, it was the exact same thing and so I'm not surprised that the chemistry was so freaking good. I just love that there seemed to be this deeper, just unexplainable almost connection between our main two characters in comparison to everybody else around them. And I love how everyone immediately becomes kind of hyper aware of the fact of like, yeah, like you guys really, really liked each other. And it's very, very, very obvious. And so that part I really, really enjoyed. And the fact that there was, I mean, there was miscommunication, but in the sense of, I am not admitting my feelings to you. And there's like this really, really small thing but I love how quick it is resolved. It is not made out to be like this huge thing. This like, you know, it was a very small moment and I, I think it kind of got the importance it deserved, which wasn't that big, which I appreciate. Cause sometimes when it's like over exaggerated, I'm like, I can't do this. And so I appreciated like the tiny little bit of conflict we got and like the resolution and the ending. Like I enjoyed every single bit of it. And I just love Hallie and Jack so, so much. This is honestly going down as one of my favorite romance romance books, I think, because the boost of serotonin this gave me the entire time I was reading it was unmatched. So this is fantastic. And again, fake dating, one bed trope, unexpectedly popped up in like the halfway mark of the book. Not expecting it at all, but I was very much appreciative of that. And I also really enjoy the fact that although these two have feelings for each other and it takes them a while to kind of figure that out, he realizes it first. It's kind of the he falls first, he falls the hardest. It's just, it's so good. But although it takes them a while to fully recognize the way that they feel. I like that when they are being flirty with each other, romantic with each other, they want to kiss each other. It starts out as an excuse and then they challenge each other of like, really, is this the reason why you're doing it? And then the other one kind of replies with the, I just want to kiss you. And so I really like the fact that they were very straightforward with, I guess like their sexual chemistry of sorts and that they were not afraid to vocalize at times how much they, you know, wanted to be in intimate with each other in whatever way that looked like. There's also texting in this book. It's one of my favorite elements, that and emails. Unmatched, unmatched. So if you haven't read The Love Wager, highly recommend. And that is it for today, friends. That is all I have got for you in this Instagram chooses what I read for a week. Thank you so much to everybody who voted on Instagram and chose the books I was going to be reading. I really want to do a round two of this eventually because I think it's a great way for me to kind of put forward the books I want to be reading, but allowing kind of fate and you guys to choose it. It was really, really fun. Had a great time. And honestly, a four and a five star read is a win in my books. So I had honestly a great time making this. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give it a massive thumbs up down below as always. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Comment down below, have you read either of these two books? Have you enjoyed them? Are you looking forward to reading them? And not only that, but also, what are you currently reading? Let a girl know all of that in the comments. And if you reach the end of the video, let us leave a, is there like a typewriter emoji? We can do that. Oh, hi, Syl. She's coming in the background. We can do a typewriter if there is that emoji. If not, then a phone. I love that. Oh my God, I just realized like the the sense of like messaging is is in both of these books honestly 10 out of 10 love that but make sure to leave either of those emojis if you reach the end of the video also if you want to support the channel further there is always a patreon linked down below we have got a book club and live shows and behind the scenes and catch-ups and just a bunch of other stuff that you guys could enjoy that is always linked down below alongside all of my socials and the podcast that i am coming back to this next week freaking finally so i'm so excited to be back with you guys on the pod after a very long time of <laughs> chronic illness and my jaw hurting so we're back and hopefully we'll be back and better than ever so yes love you guys so much and i will see you on the next one goodbye